guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Dirtbag Outdoors YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning on in. I've got Cody here with me again. Couple of items here for your viewing pleasure. We're not gonna talk about these specifically. These are just, just take them in for their beauty. You know what I mean? We got an old school stainless 50 Desert Eagle, Glock 19X, a uh, Smith 22 that looks like the barrel's missing. This thing's fun, super accurate, very good trigger. We got an AR pistol. This is an Arrow M4 E1 with a bipod that's still on it from the last video. You know what I'm saying? We'd be out there tactical with these. Uh, but no, in all seriousness, we're just gonna kind of talk a, a little bit about kind of more of a, a long form um, insider knowledge shared with you guys about working in the firearms industry, specifically in a gun shop, right? If you guys don't know, I've managed a gun shop for almost the past six years. Cody's been working with me for um, around two years. And we've, we've got some stories. There's a lot of stuff, a, a lot, you know, I love, I absolutely love our customers. But in any sort of retail setting, you get, you know, you get your bad ones. It is what it is. Your undesirables. Yeah, it's just, it's just the way the world works. So if you guys work in a gun shop, if you have any stories, please share them below. I love reading them and, and, and seeing other people say the same stuff. It's just, it, it's all in good fun. But some of this stuff we're going to talk about, we won't take up too much time. It's just going to be uh, kind of general questions, not necessarily stories. If you guys like this type of stuff, we'll continue to do them, to kind, of, kind of share some good, bad, and ugly stories with you guys. Just let us know down below. But first and foremost, let's just jump right into the elephant in the room. Uh, you you like guns, right? You like firearms. You're like, wow, man, maybe I should open up my own shop. What's it like? This, that, and the other thing. Well, I'm here to tell you firsthand that a standalone gun shop where all you do is sell firearms, you don't have a range, you don't have other stuff for sale, you know, this, that, and the other thing. There's no money in firearms, guys. There's... There's pennies on the dollar if you're lucky, all right? For instance, there's a lot of, of these firearms that, you know, that let's just say something's $589, okay? There's a good chance that the cost of that, depending on the, the, the brand, of course, but there's a good chance that that cost is going to be $548. By the time you book it in, you know, you're going to have an hour between um, putting it in your A&D book between doing the background check, between someone selling it. And um, at the end of the day, your credit card fees, everything like that, we don't charge extra credit card fees. People that do that, I don't like it. Nope. But uh, at the end of the day, you, you might not make anything. You might think, oh, at least I'll make 50 bucks selling this. You're not, you're really not. You know, time is money. There is no money in new firearms. There's no money in ammo. There's some money in scopes and things. If you're a big time dealer, we're not. We don't really dabble in that market too much. Um, but there is a silver lining, okay? It's not all bad. Used firearms, there can be some decent money in there, especially especially the right ones, the, the really high dollar stuff that you could buy at the right price. Um, those, those, are the, those are the ones that kind of bring the glory back, if you will. So if, if you don't have, if you're just a small, that's why all these gun shops go out of business, guys. It, it, the small mom and pop, you know, your buddy opens up a shop and he does good at first. It, it's not really sustainable. I hate to say it. It's just a lot of people think that there's a ton of money in this and you know they try to beat you down on price. You're like, I'm already making 30 bucks on the surface, but you're really not. You're, you're probably losing. But if you have a range, we don't. But if you do, if you notice, the shops with ranges typically stay, okay? There's a lot of money from what I've seen, from what I've read. Um, again, I don't have first-hand experience owning or operating one, but that's kind of where the money is. If you have a shop, have a range, have rental firearms. Yeah. That's another big one. Um, you know, a lot of these ranges, you have to shoot their ammo. That's marked up. Not everyone does it, but a lot of people, you know, you, you would buy an ammo to take home for 20 bucks, but they charge you 26 and you got to shoot it there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, quick recap. I'm going to let Cody take a turn see what he has to say. But yeah, quick recap. There's no money in new firearms. If, you, if you're going to do this, you kind of got to go all out. You got to have a range or you got to specialize in something other than your new Smiths, your new Glocks, your new Keltex, there's no money in it. Uh, specialize in higher end stuff, used firearms, collectible stuff that you know people people will pay for. Uh, and have a range, have rental firearms. That's where the money's going to be. It's not in your typical mom and pop gun shop. What do you think? Uh, I will piggyback off of you. There's no uh, money to be made in new guns unless, and this is a very big unless, you buy very high end firearms. And they're about two to three hundred dollars from the map price. 
but the other side of that, not a whole lot of people are going to single mom and pop shops to buy high-end firearms. They're going there specifically looking for used. And I mean, we, we don't have a range. We don't know what the costs are of uh, maintaining that. So that, that could also be a, a, a big thing there, maintaining your firearms that are, uh, that, that are for rental and uh, rebuilding your backstops. I don't have, like I said, firsthand experience operating a, a range. I just know from experience, um, just from, from being alive, that pretty much all the, range, all the gun shops that have ranges that I've ever known are still there. So I'm kind of just going off of, I think that that's what's keeping them afloat because it's not new gun prices. It right. just, it can't be. Uh, so my thing is, if you wanted to sell a used firearm, uh, please, please don't bring it in loaded. There have been too, too many times where I'm sitting there at the counter and they're like, hey, I have a firearm in my truck or my van or my car, um, just letting you know I'm bringing it in. Cool, thank you, thanks for letting me know. You know, I mean, we, we have people come in with uh, non-cased firearms all the time. Our policy is not really, you know, keep them in a case or anything like that, which may be a little dumb. However, a lot of places are, if it's not in a case, don't, don't even think about opening the door. And, and to some, some extent, I like that policy. Yeah. To the other extent, we, we deal fairly heavily in used firearms, okay? To some extent, though, a lot of these people, for whatever reason, okay, you guys be the judge on why, they don't have cases, okay? They don't, they don't have cases. They, I've seen them wrapped in towels. That's better than nothing. But a lot of these people, if, um, uh, you know, someone passes away and their, their son or their wife or whatever, like, they have no idea what they have. They bring them in, like, in the bundle. I, I, I've seen everything, but for whatever reason, a lot of people don't have something to bring it in. So that's kind of why we're a little lax on that. But, you know, I, I understand why other shops do it. Somebody will come in, hey, I got a firearm out of my truck. Sure, go ahead, bring it on in. Um, I'll get you down here. And then they don't even check if it's loaded, and they hand the firearm over to me. First thing I do, take the mag out, see that there's rounds in the magazine. I'm like, oh, cool, thank you. You, you, you did flag me with this gun. Again, because, you know, lack of firearm etiquette. And it, 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 a lot of it, too, people, there's, there's two people that bring in loaded firearms, okay? There's two types. Let me know if you agree with this. There's a type that they don't literally know how to check it. They inherited them. It's the little old lady, husband's past, and she's, she has no idea. Like, there's the people who genuinely don't know, which is still wrong, but it's, I guess it's a little more understandable. Um, but then there's the people who, who I can't count. I, I don't have enough fingers and toes to count how many times myself and my staff have been flagged with loaded firearms. Um, and it's usually not the little old lady who just doesn't know. It's usually the people who are gun guys or... They're just like, oh, I thought it was unloaded. Yeah. I thought I cleared it. Oh, it should have been cleared before in the truck or whatever. And it's just, it's pure negligence. There's a zero tolerance from me on that. There's, you know, no way, no way. Yeah, and you, you can kind of feel out like, okay, this person may not have the most knowledge uh, on firearms, like the little old ladies, or even, you know, some, some just random, uh, some normal looking people. Um, but yeah, it's typically the guys that come in and they're like, hey, I want to sell this. Make sure if you don't know if it's loaded, if you don't know if you're the little old lady, ask someone, hey, I got this firearm. I'm not sure if it's loaded. Can you come out to my car or, or whatever? Um, something like that. Just, just kind of a tip because I'm not trying to get my head blown off. I don't want my staff to get shot. Uh, we, it's already kind of dangerous enough getting flagged way more often than we should. Right. And I am a very firm believer that, you know, my, my, my sister, I've, I've kind of trained her a little bit, and uh, she's, she used to refer to it as an accidental discharge. And I said, no, no, get that out of your head. There is no such thing as an accidental discharge. It is a negligent discharge. 
There is no such thing as an accidental dental discharge. I mean, sure, there are freak accidents, but more often than not, 99% of the times. You sick people are probably laughing right now with their recall. <laughs> Shigs, SIGs shoot so good, they shoot even when you don't want them to. Right. Um, and that brings me to another one, okay? We're just winging this here, guys. That brings me to another one. So when I show a firearm, you could, I've checked this twice already, just out of habitually, right? Cody checked it. Like, it's just, it's ingrained. There's zero chance I will ever pick up a firearm and not check it. Zero. Yep. Every single time. I don't care if it's a single shot with the break, the, the break action that's opened. I'm still going to look and, like, confirm, shove my finger in the chamber, something like that. But I, I, I clear the gun before I hand it to the customer and, again, after they hand it to me. But here's what you don't want to do. This happens way too many times. Cody, you're probably going to laugh, okay? Yep. I hand, it, I hand it the firearm like this. Magazine, usually like this, right? Um, anyways, this is what happened. Anyways, this happens all the time. They'll put the magazine in. You know, they're tactical Tony. They think they know because they saw a YouTube video of their buddy shooting a deer with one bullet, uh, shot three deer in four different counties with their grandpa's 30-06, those people. They do this. You hand them the firearm. And they go instantly, instantly on the trigger, right at you, right at other customers, flagging all of us. There are some times where, you know, I, I hand somebody a firearm, I do the exact same thing, check it, open it, release the magazine, hand it to them with the muzzle facing towards me. Because if anybody's going to point a gun at me, it's going to be me. And they'll sit there and they'll have it pointed right at me while I'm looking and I'll kind of do one of these numbers and kind of scoot away. And it's almost like, it's almost like they, uh, they just know I'm trying to get away and they will follow me. It's like it me. magnetized. Yeah, it's just magnetized. And then you gotta us. be like, hey, please, please yeah, like, don't point that at anyone. Mind your muzzle. Yeah, like please, it, we have to tell people not to point guns at people far too often. That's basically the gist of what we're trying to say. Or these are the ones that I love. You hand them the gun, and they're aware that you're there. And where our but Joe where, Bob is right over right, there. Right, where where our uh, where our counters are, and then where you go to check out. All of our employees are usually over there, and they just ride at them. And I'm like, oh, there's people over there. Please, you got the muzzle. you got the scope people, the scope people that are like. <laughs> yeah, off the shoulder. Off the shoulder, looking right at someone's head through the store. It, you guys have seen it. I know you have. Everyone has. L let us know those stories down below. And let us know if you've been flagged by anybody in a store while you're not even looking at the guns. Yep. Yep. That, I think it's common. I really do. I'd be curious to, to see what you guys say. And guys, the last one we're just going to talk about, uh, one more thing here. When you want to sell or trade in your firearm, okay, <clears throat> there's a couple of tips, okay? First and foremost, I, I, I'm, I'm speaking for us. I'm speaking for my store. I don't know your store. I don't know what your their staff is. Their manager. I don't know their them. Okay. I'm speaking for us, and anyone else who runs a solid, honest business with integrity. Okay. We're not going to lowball you. Okay. We're not just going to take advantage of the little old lady who has no idea a, a beautiful you know, Remington 1100 and we offer her fifty dollars. I that, knew you were going to say 1100. That doesn't happen. Okay. We do not do that. I will give you every cent that I possibly can because I want your nice firearm. I want it to resell. I want the inventory, okay? I'm not gonna try and lowball you. That's not the way we do things. However, there is a lot of people don't understand what to expect when getting an offer for their firearm. Same kind of thing with the used car trade-in. Um, it, it, it's really no different, unfortunately. I don't really like the car business, but people think their stuff's worth more than it is. It just is what it is. I do it. You do it. This thing may only be worth 600 bucks, but I love this thing and I won't take, I want 600 bucks from a store. Mm -hmm. That's just not, that's not realistic. That's, that's not realistic. A store would try to get 600 bucks for this. They've got the time of inspection, cleaning, um, time, labor, the, the, the selling, the salary, you know, back to that stuff. There's a lot of stuff involved. If you sell it online, there's fees, there's shipping, there's uh, credit card fees that we don't charge, but we have to you know, take into account a little bit on a used firearm when we go to resell it. 
there's a lot of information out there that will help you develop uh, and kind of get an ID on your price. Ask around, take it to a few different places, okay? Find a trustworthy place that, that you feel good at. You know, you, you gotta, as, as a customer, you should feel um, good about it, just as we, as the store, buying it from you should feel good about it, okay? So find out what your gun's worth, get an idea, but guys, that's just, at the end of the day, that's not what you're gonna get for. Right. There, there's just, we, we can't, we can't do that. And one thing that I personally always do, if somebody doesn't like my offer and they're like, oh, I'm gonna go somewhere else, I always tell them like, hey, look, this is what to expect. We're all gonna be pretty much around the same area, at least expect this much for your firearm, which is what I offer. If, it's, if I'm offering them $300 for a gun, I tell them like, hey, expect around $300. If somebody tells you 200, they're trying to lowball you. I wouldn't give them my business. Once it says 100 bucks, once it says 600 bucks, you know something is wrong. Get a third or fourth opinion just to verify. Definitely go around, check other stores, make sure you're getting a fair deal on your items. All right, guys, thanks for watching this first little episode of this. If you guys want more, please comment down below. Make sure you're subscribed. Check out the links down below. I love you. We'll see you next time.